welcome to the take control of your integration testing with test container session by naresha well let's uh, start with the you know take control of your integration testing with the test containers let's uh, see few demos how uh, test containers will change the way you uh, you know do your integration testing my name is uh, naresha and uh, i help uh, you know teams to get uh, better with their uh, technical uh, practices so since this is a short uh, 20 minutes uh, session uh, i'll be focusing on uh, two use cases how i ended up uh, using uh, test containers to start with uh, i want you to think about uh, you know how did it feel when you were doing uh, integration uh, testing was it uh, good not so good mostly integration testing is uh, highly challenging and uh, not many people uh, enjoy that especially because you are not in control right you are in control of the system with which you are integrating that is the main challenge of uh, you know integration testing making it uh, highly difficult and people don't uh, uh, you know, maintain their uh, tests well, and ultimately your integration tests add uh, fewer value as the time passes. So let me talk about uh, the story one, where in I already had uh, an uh, application, uh, you know, uh, in production, uh, which was uh, actually a Grails application. We had used Grails, uh, you know, framework for the application wherein which we had a slight problem, which was uh, solved by introducing test containers. So to start the story, the problem was uh, something uh, like this. So you look at uh, sample code here, where in which I have a list of uh, cities, which is a list of string, and I'm trying to get uh, all the conferences which uh, happen uh, in the given uh, cities. Essentially, this uh, you know GORM code would get uh, translated into this uh, SQL uh, statement. Essentially, it's uh, you know where uh, in clause. What happens here is uh, until then we were uh, using uh, H2 for, uh, you know, which is an in, uh, in-memory database and we were using uh, that for writing our uh, integration testing so that, uh, you know, tests are very fluent and we already had uh, good uh, developer experience support uh, from the Grail framework uh, such as, uh, you know, uh, we want to do uh, some data setup right in the beginning and uh, at the end of uh, the test you know, the database will be rolled back. Uh, so it was pretty easy to, uh, you know, set up data and uh, run integration tests. But there was one issue. So for example, this query would uh, run pretty much fine with the H2. However, uh, when, uh, you know, we move to say, you know, uh, staging our production, uh, we were using uh, MySQL wherein, uh, you know, empty in clause uh, wasn't uh, allowed by MySQL. So that that's a kind of uh, challenge uh, we had. So to start with how uh, it uh, works with the H2 here, uh, I have the settings which uh, we were using. Uh, you could see the H2 driver I'm using and it's all uh, you know, in memory database uh, what I'm using. So if I uh, run, here is the sample test. The test is uh, written in uh, Spock, which uh, absolutely runs fine. And uh, you would, uh, you know, the te test would pass. So we assume the code would uh, work however let's say we want to use uh, use uh, mysql so in this case uh, i uh, simulate using mysql i'm already running uh, mysql on localhost uh, 3306 the database name is uh, test app see what happens uh, in this uh, case the same test and uh, the we are trying to run the test and uh, we would uh, end up getting uh, an error message. If you look at the error message, it's uh, saying that, uh, you know, it's an uh, incorrect uh, statement because it's not allowing uh, empty values, uh, you know, in, uh, in class. That, that's the issue. So if, if we had uh, used uh, MySQL for, uh, you know, integration testing, uh, we could have uh, caught uh, these errors up front. So we did not, uh, we were not aware of, uh, or at least there were no test containers when we started the project. But then when we had one, we started, uh, we thought of uh, introducing that. So 
here is the additional uh, dependencies uh, which is a uh, you know in uh, gradle build system uh, there is a bomb available so that you don't have to mention the version for each and every tool and uh, there are uh, you know in integration for test framework there is one for uh, junit 4 there is one for uh, the GUnit Jupyter and there's one for uh, Spock as well. Since I'm using a Spock as framework, I'm using the dependency related to that. And uh, there is a direct uh, support for, uh, you know, several uh, relational databases. Most of the popular ones uh, are uh, supported. And uh, in this case, uh, I'm using MySQL. So we, this is the configuration we need to add uh, to write the code. And there is a convenient uh, configuration available uh, so that uh, the driver class is, uh, you know, you can use a container or database driver so that you don't have to give the very specific uh, ones like MySQL or Postgres, things like that, which can be inferred uh, from the, you know, the URL mentioned here, which starts with the TC indicating it's a test container. So following that, uh, the database type is mentioned using that uh, test containers will identify the type of uh, database which you are using. A few more benefits I'll uh, mention to you after the demo. So with this, uh, there's a slight uh, additional one statement we have to introduce. So MySQL container, we have to create an instance of that passing uh, the configuration values. So I could uh, use the test app as a database name and other values. Now let's uh, try to run the, you know, our test and see what happens. So previously, I had to set up a MySQL instance uh, on my own. However, in this case, uh, I just need to start or run my application test. And, uh, you know, test container will automatically use spin up a uh, Docker container, uh, you know, with the MySQL uh, image. And it will run that and make it available for the application. Now uh, we are getting the you know, same error so that, uh, you know, you can... Uh, Get the which will reduce the feedback uh, cycle and uh, makes it uh, you know much easier to uh, identify the errors upfront because you are using the same setup what uh, you would end up using in the higher environments, not uh, an uh, in-memory database. A quick uh, recap of uh, what the configuration here. Uh, uh, well, the important to note that uh, you know typically you would have uh, end up uh, using uh, the configuration twice once to create uh, the container and once for the configurations which you don't have to do that uh, which is kind of uh, an improvement uh, introduced by the test containers project uh, after a while like uh, sometime in last year i believe so that you don't have to violate uh, the dry principle you could uh, put all the configuration in one place uh, since i'm uh, instantiating the container only in one place i have put it that if you have uh, multiple test classes, you could put these values in a configuration file. In that case, uh, how you read the configuration will be, you know, uh, dependent on the framework you are using. In this case, uh, I have used a very framework agnostic way. By framework, I mean the application framework, not the test framework. Of course, it is coupled to the test framework, uh, what we are using. But mostly it will be very similar with the slight change uh, if you are using uh, JUnit. With that, let's uh, move on to story two. So uh, an important aspect here is like, we were already aware of, uh, you know, test containers availability of that. We had already used it in, um, uh, you know, use case one. So this is like uh, in another project wherein where we were using, uh, uh, we were doing a S3 integration with the S3 API. So we thought uh, it would be a good idea to use a local stack, which can be run on, uh, container and uh, use that for uh, your local development without, uh, you know, using the AWS uh, API for development purposes. Of course, with the, on production, we would uh, use uh, AWS uh, S3 implementation. Uh, so what happened is initially I thought uh, I could start with the spike because that was the first time um, I was using uh, local stack. It was, it was not the first time I was using uh, S3 API though. So I thought of doing it manually and I think I would, would have end up, uh, ended up spending at least uh, 30 plus minutes. And there were several issues uh, like uh, the way URL would start with like a bucket name, dot host name, et cetera. Uh, so which, which was not very convenient, not a pleasant experience. So I thought of uh, test driving the code by introducing uh, the local stack uh, dependency. 
So we uh, what you need to do is you have to add uh, the local uh, stack uh, dependency here. Then what what we would do is we would uh, go to the code uh, something uh, like this. Here is the again the specification part, and uh, I would uh, instantiate a local stack uh, container. And of course, local stack supports uh, in addition to S3 a lot of other services like uh, SQS, etc. In this case, I just need uh, S3. And uh, I'm using, uh, you know, uh, Amazon S3 service is the kind of uh, plugin I'm using here to which I have to supply the, the which has to connect to local stack. That's why, uh, you know, I take the configuration uh, from the local stack and uh, supply it to the service. Then I have uh, tests to check, uh, you know, create a bucket and check if the bucket exists and uh, I take a file, put it into S3 in this case, local stack, and then again, try to read that, uh, you know, make sure the file exists and uh, read the file and compare the file that it is what exactly, you know, originally I put, which is a sample uh, one I had uh, put, which is very similar to what uh, we had uh, used. So, you know, if I uh, run this code, which would uh, again, you know, uh, spin up uh, the local stack and uh, you are, uh, your code will talk to the you know S3 implementation of local stack and which would work. So th th this is another uh, convenient way of, of uh, using uh, you know test containers. Similarly, there are uh, several uh, you know uh, other uh, uh, RDBMS which I already talked about. Local stack is there. There are several other uh, integrations which with which like uh, Selenium API for example, which is uh, out of the box available with the named uh, API in a uh, test container. Uh, if you don't have uh, a specific integration readily available, you could still instantiate uh, something called uh, generic container and you could supply the image name and uh, test containers would uh, download the image and uh, run that. And uh, there are other uh, integration support like uh, if you want to wait for uh, some uh, you know service to come up on a particular port or uh, you know things like that so that uh, you know when the test or when that so that the test container knows when test can be run because uh, you know your uh, uh, service has to be ready before uh, uh, running your test so that that can also be done uh, by uh, you know test uh, containers one important uh, thing what we need to understand or uh, why this makes easy right uh, you could also say that uh, say instead of using uh, test containers why not i just uh, use uh, uh, Docker uh, container directly, but in that case, you will have to spin up uh, your uh, you know Docker instance before uh, starting your uh, integration test. And once you start your uh, running your test, you don't have any control on the lifecycle of the system you are integrating with. However, in this case, what happens is uh, you know whatever uh, system you are integrating, the lifecycle of that comes uh, right into your uh, you know test life cycle so that you can control like when you want to uh, you know start uh, it or uh, you know when you want to uh, recycle that etc whether you want to use a single instance for all your tests or maybe you want to you know say uh, spin up the container run certain tests uh, so and so which which can be you know done uh, by uh, uh, so 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 you get uh, that control within your test life cycle that that's the exact uh, benefit you get and everything can be done uh, right uh, you know within your uh, code rather than uh, you know doing it uh, outside your test code that that's the kind of uh, control you get With that, yeah, so the code base uh, is available uh, in the given uh, GitHub uh, repository and uh, for uh, the documentation of uh, test containers tool, uh, you could look at uh, testcontainers.org. Uh, uh, that was a quick uh, demo of, uh, you know, two use cases what I had used. Uh, uh, I'd be open for questions now. This question is from okay. Narain. And the question is, mm -hmm. can I have customized test container built on the go? Uh, see, what you need is a Docker uh, image has to be available. Uh, as long as, yeah, you can create a Docker image. You can create a generic container, uh, you know, mentioning uh, the 
image name and you should be able to spin off that with the test containers. That's all the prerequisite what you need.